Alrighty everybody, back with another unboxing, and in this case, a first look for me. So this would be an unboxing and first look, even though this has already been out for a little bit. Um, I don't want to say quite some time, but it's certainly not something brand spanking new. So in a sense, the words first look can be interchangeable when it comes to the uh, circumstance. In this case, it's my first look, and very well, it may be yours as well. It's not brand new, but hey, it's still nice and juicy, which is a very odd word to use right now, juicy, but here we go. Got ourselves an AMD Athlon 2, and in this case, an Athlon 2 X, uh, X4 605E. X4 signifying that is, it is indeed a quad core. My English is totally escaping me today, so sorry. But yeah, so we got ourselves a multi-core processor, as it says here in the box, and there you go. Look, they're giving you a little tease. You can touch it. Um, and look, that's to signify that it's legit. Nice little holographic image there, so you don't get something fake. All right, features fusion, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's where the whole fusion and vision idea comes to play. In this case, I am not using a discrete ATI, or rather AMD now, um, graphics card. I'll just be using something embedded on the, um, I, <clears throat> I'll be using the embedded graphics on the motherboard that I'm going to pair with this, which will be part of another video, part of uh, another build that I'm doing for somebody else. So yeah, just to keep it simple, this is, um, you know, simple, sweet, and short. This is AMD's Athlon 2. X4, four physical cores, 605E. The E standing for energy efficient. As you can see, here we go. Uh, 2.3 true quad core design. Two megabyte total, two megabytes of total cache. That would be only L2. That was the only thing that kind of, um, you know, disappointed me a little bit. It is, has no L3 cache at all. But, well, whatever, for the price, I don't mind the compromise. So energy efficient, 45 watts, you know, versus 65, 95 and above. And socket AM3, which of course means DDR3. Now you could use this in an AM2 board. It would fit. It just depends if your motherboard wants to accept it. But technically it would work because AMD's AM3 processors are, their memory controllers do support DDR2. Just have to have the uh, board that uh, supports DDR2 in order to do that. All right, so I guess let's, you know, my videos tend to be long, so let's get to the point. And I was saying about how um, AM3 processors like this work with DDR2 memory, even though they're made for DDR3, because I have an ASUS uh, AM2, AM2 Plus board, which obviously runs on DDR2. Yeah, I can plug this one in and that, and it would work. All it would need is a BIOS update, which I already did. So it's, it would support AM3 processors like, like nothing. But I mean, you know, considering today, if you want to do yourself, uh, if you want to get yourself a DDR2 platform, you know, you're looking at extra buku bucks. Because DDR2 has slowly been phased out, uh, being phased out, and it's just, the prices are insane. So, all right, let's get this bad boy. This is a retail box, so you're getting the CPU and heatsink assembly. And let's see, oh, oh, it comes on the side. All right, wait. we got ourselves a user manual here. Nice, no sticker on it, good, let me just open it. There we go, it's telling you about the different sockets. Yep, 940, which is basically AM2. 939, basically the same thing, but I think 939 were the old uh, Opteron ones, I believe. I could be wrong. 754, those are like the old Athlon XPs, I believe. Unless it's 642, I forget. <laughs> But yeah, so this is simple. I'm sure it's in more than one language. It usually is. If it's not, then shame on you, AMD. I expect more from you, but I'm pretty sure it is. So wait, here we have the process. I'm going to put it over here. I'm not going to cheat. I've actually yet to see a. I mean, this is not new by any stretch of the uh, by any stretch of the word, but I mean, 
It's new to me because I haven't seen a brand new AMD retail box CPU in a while, so this heat sink assembly is probably going to look exactly the same. Oh, I think this is actually going to end up being a little low profile because this is an energy efficient one, so let's find out. Uh, actually, yeah, wow. That is low profile. Look at that. This is about, yeah, this is about an 80 millimeter. Yep. Nice thin fans, which allows you to have, uh, not fans, uh, fins, as uh, allows you to have more in uh, smaller space. Here's the pre-applied thermal solution, uh, you know, thermal compound. But yeah, look at that. That is one low profile, darn. I actually kind of like this. I could have used this in my HTPC. But uh, yeah, there you go. Get your uh, fan connector there, four pin, PWM. You know, you know, latch assembly right here like every other AMD heat sink has, or usually has. And now, besides the random green dot, we got ourselves a processor. Ooh, it feels a little heavy. And a sticker, very nice. I figured it would say X4 on it, but it doesn't. The uh, sticker, I mean. So yeah, let's take it out. Oh, I'm gonna do this on the side here so I don't mess something up. Wow, yeah, this, this feels pretty heavy compared to the uh, last AMD CPU that I've held in my hand. Wow, this is actually a hefty little son of a gun. Look at that. Yeah, this is heavy. <laughs> it was like a tiny paperweight. But yeah, there we go. Athlon 2 X4 quad core. 45 watts. This is certainly not going to get hot by any stretch of the mean. The means what? There goes my English again. Sorry. Alrighty, so that pretty much does it. There isn't really much else to say. Yeah, I cut the video there as I'm trying to cut out my bull crap to keep it as short as, as short as possible. So thank you, folks, for watching my unboxing and first look of the AMD Athlon 2 X4605E, energy efficiency for the wind.